a child of migrants to this country. How horrified were you as you began to see those reports of the Windrush children being treated so appallingly as they attempted to prove that they are legitimate citizens? Well, um, uh, another time, uh, another place, uh, Robert, uh, and it could have been my family. My grandfather arrived here uh, in the 50s uh, and my parents arrived here uh, in the 60s. Uh, and, uh, and I know growing up the paranoia that they had about paperwork and passports. And I think that came from a deep-rooted uh, concern, uh, amongst other things, from the rhetoric that we were, here from the, we were hearing from the likes of Enoch Powell, that there may come a day when they would be told to leave. And I think 50 years on, it's uh, tragic that uh, that very scenario that so many migrants and descendants of migrants uh, uh, lived with fear of uh, came true during the Windrush tragedy. Um, who, do you, who or what do you hold to blame for this debacle? I think we're all responsible, including I would hold myself responsible as part of a government during 2010 and 2014 where these changes in immigration laws uh, were brought about. But did, it started did you not, did long you not, before did, that. Did, did, uh, unfortunately, sorry. the... I, I, I just wondered whether at the time the you climate of... were given advice about the possible implications for, you know, as I say, families like your own. Yeah, the, dis the debate and discussion around immigration, certainly during the coalition years, uh, was very uh, strong around the cabinet table. And it wasn't just uh, f along the lines of uh, the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives. Many, many of uh, the Conservatives around that table, many of my colleagues, were some of the harshest uh, critics of what was being done uh, in the name of more controlled immigration. And those debates didn't just uh, focus around what we're dealing with now, but also around, for example, student numbers and, and visitor applications and trade uh, applications. So there was a much broader uh, debate. I think what happened, unfortunately, during those years and has continued is that we had uh, an unhealthy obsession with numbers. Uh, we had, we were wedded to unrealistic targets, targets which we still haven't met, unfortunately, uh, um, uh, a decade on, and yet we continue to remain wedded uh, to these targets. And what ended up happening was that we, we ended up with an attitude of, I think, indifference to what could have been the unintended consequences consequences that we're now seeing of the policy that we were then implementing. Uh, but I think rather than just looking back at this moment in time and calling for resignations, what I want and what I welcome really is, first of all, uh, the apologies. Uh, secondly, the, uh, the offer of compensation, which I hope will be quick and clear. But then I hope moving on from that, um, all politicians uh, on all sides of this discussion uh, to move forward and really pledge to move away from that rhetoric, the way in which which we other communities amongst uh, us. And it goes beyond just the immigration debate. I mean, we've seen the appalling othering of uh, the British Jewish community and the anti-Semitism row within the Labour Party. I know within my own party, there are almost now weekly occurrences of Islamophobic uh, incidents and rhetoric. And we saw it during the Bre Brexit debate. So I think, you know, what we should learn from this is that if we start to other communities in this way, we start to make people amongst us, our fellow citizens, feel like they do not belong. Um, I, I know you want to look forward, but just on, on the point of where we are, we've had months of reports of how the Windrush children are being appallingly treated, months of them. The Home Office has been very slow to react. Is the Home Secretary Amber Rudd's position sustainable? Um, I, I think that um, I wouldn't certainly be calling for the resignation of uh, Amber Rudd or indeed any other minister, but what I would like ministers to do is think long and hard about the trauma that we have caused uh, these families. Uh, I think uh, an apology was the first step. Well, engagement was the first step, followed by an apology. I hope this offer of compensation is uh, full and clearly acknowledges, I don't know how you start to uh, compensate people who've been removed from this country, who've had to miss out, who've who've lost jobs, who've lost homes, who became homeless, who, who've had to miss out on family uh, births and uh, weddings and, and, um, and funerals. Uh, so I really hope that this is a sincere commitment uh, from the government. But I also hope it's a moment for us all to reflect. I think too often, uh, both within the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, uh, we've been uh, too quick to pander to headlines in certain newspapers, favourable headlines in certain newspapers. And certainly during the 2015 and 2017 election.
election, both parties were strongly courting and trying to win back uh, the old UKIP vote. Uh, so I think it is a moment to reflect. It's something, Robert, that I raised during mm. the Brexit campaign when you will recall that I stepped away from uh, the Leave campaign because I felt that it was toxic. You run toxic policies and toxic campaigns and toxic political rhetoric. We end up with a more divided country. And at a time when we're looking back 50 years to those uh, divisive comments by Enoch Powell, that was a moment of shame. And I think this, the Windrush tragedy, is another moment of shame for, for all of us as a nation uh, to, on to, all sides of the political to, to, divide. To, to take the toxicity out of the debate, would you say this is a moment where, for example, the Prime Minister should consider taking student numbers uh, out of those immigration targets? Absolutely. They make no sense. It's an argument I've made over a number of years, an argument that many Conservative colleagues have been making for a number of years. But I would go beyond that. Look, we have a unrealistic target uh, which has no evidential base, uh, which has, despite being in place now for nearly a decade, has simply not been met. And I think it's simply there for political posturing. And I think these issues are far too serious for us to play politics with this issue. And I think it is important for us to learn from this tragedy and hopefully move forward with an immigration policy which of course believes in controls uh, but we have an immigration policy which is about control not a callous immigration policy we're almost out of time two more quick questions first one when you saw the van campaign the go home or face arrest slogan how did you feel as a member of that government um, at the time, I think, I, well, I was in government and I think uh, yeah. the strongest words that I was able to use, certainly in the public domain, was that it was not uh, Theresa's finest moment. Um, and privately, I think that was what were you as saying? Politely, as I could have put it. Privately, were you arguing uh, against pri it? Privately, I was appalled. Privately, I was appalled. I mean, the, this sense of going home. Like I said, you know, my parents' generation lived with this fear. I remember growing up in the 70s where mum and dad would often talk about, well, there will come a time when we will be asked to leave, we will be asked to go home. And I would just simply laugh at this suggestion <coughs> that anything would, you know, I said, look, you know, we're moving, certainly in the 80s, we're moving in the right direction. This is something that couldn't even possibly be be part of our political rhetoric and I think uh, year after year over the last few years I'm shocked that the kind of thing that I thought would never reappear in British politics has started to do so and that's that, why we all have a responsibility to that, move beyond this simple and, 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 and finally and I'm sorry we are almost out of time the Syria bombing actually now feels a world away although it was only just over a week ago do you think it was the right thing to do do you think that Theresa May has achieved anything um, I think that uh, the Syria crisis, which has now been going on since 2011, I, in fact, I sat in the cabinet uh, immediately before the, the last vote uh, before Parliament, where Parliament voted uh, no, uh, was, uh, was a disaster. I think we should have intervened in Syria many, many uh, years ago. Uh, I, I don't think that there was an immediate humanitarian disaster, the basis upon which we're now trying to justify uh, this particular um, uh, strike. But I think if you're asking me the question, do I feel that strikes in Syria are justified, I think they were justified many years ago. Very good to talk to you and hope to see you again soon. Thank you, Baroness Varsi. And now, 